and highs to stay alive But if I'm with you, I'll survive So hold me close into the night Cause I need you to stay You take me to paradise That's why it's hard to wait Can I be around you For motivation Just a little while now A simple Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you 10 recipes in the Ninja Foodie. Some of these are new recipes that I've never tried so hopefully they come out good. I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, I wanted to try some things that were a little bit different and fun so I have some appetizers, um, I have a breakfast, I have a meal, and then I also have some yummy dessert. So let's get right into this video. If you don't know what the Ninja Foodie is, it's like an air fryer slash grill, slash a bunch of other things. I think it's on sale right now, so you should definitely check that out. I'll leave it linked below. Um, but we use it all the time, not for anything fancy, but for the normal chicken nugs, hot dogs, um, what else? Roasted veggies. Um, I make a lot of sweet potato fries, carrot fries. We use it for everything. Also, the kids love chicken wings in there, so perfect for that. But anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna start off with the breakfast burritos because I'm hungry and I need some breakfast. So let's get started with that. I'll show you all the ingredients that you need and then we're gonna go ahead and put it together. For this recipe, you're just gonna need some baby spinach, some eggs, bacon, whatever kind of wraps you like. We are gluten-free, so we're using these wraps. And then you can also add cheese or sausage, whatever kind of breakfast burrito you like. Um, basically, the point of this is to make it and then air fry it, and we'll, it is supposed to stay together nicely, so let's try Before it. we even get into like the breakfast burrito part, I'm gonna show you how to make bacon in here because it comes out nice and crispy. This is the crisping tray. Um, there's also like a grill tray that comes with it, but we're gonna be using this right now. Um, and then we're just gonna place about six pieces of bacon in here. What's your favorite way to cook bacon? I also really love doing it in the cast iron skillet become, because I like it really crispy and it comes out really crispy in there as well. So those are probably like the two main ways. When I'm making like a big breakfast for our whole family, I'll wind up just throwing it in the oven since I could use like a large baking tray. Um, I think I'm only gonna be able to fit about five in here. And we are putting it in here before we even turn the air fryer on. All the other recipes, you're gonna wanna turn the air fryer on and preheat it, um, which you'll see here in a minute. We've talked about this in the past, but I know that some people like chewy bacon or soft bacon, but we are a crispy bacon family over here. Right, babe? Okay, so now we're going to close this. Hit start. We're gonna hit the temperature. We're gonna do an air crisp. We're gonna put it on 360 and we're gonna hit start. So right now it's cooking while it's preheating. Like I said, not a lot of things to do that for. I have seen people do bacon in the oven and while it's preheating as well. So I guess it's that same kind of concept. So we're making that for our burritos. Side note, it will beep and say add food and you're just gonna open it and close it back up. Okay, so at the five minute mark, I could smell that it was done. Go ahead and put it on our paper towel so I can get all the grease off. And then I also just wanted to mention the timing. I always go like with what I smell. I swear I can just like smell when things are done. Maybe that's weird. <laughs> um, but it also depends on like how much fat content your bacon has. So if it's like a really fatty piece of bacon. You want some bacon? Yeah? Oh, cheers. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm gonna let this cool off and then I'm gonna start assembling our little breakfast burritos. Did 
air crisp at 330 degrees for five minutes and I left the bacon grease in there because I just felt like it would be a sin to take it out. Also, if you're not using gluten-free wraps, it'd be much easier. Gluten-free wraps are just like really hard to deal with. You can see they're already like pre-broken in here. Um, so like a regular flour tortilla would work much better or any other kind of wrap. Okay, they are done. Chris stole one already. He said they're delicious. Um, but I like how they're just like nice and crispy and they won't fall apart as easily. Of course, it'd be way better with cheese, but I love this idea and that was so, so fast. It's also a great thing for breakfast meal prep. So good. So easy. And again, I think it would be great to make a bunch of these for like meal prep. I'll definitely be doing this. I bet you the kids would like it too. I've seen a lot of recipes where you can add like little hash browns to this and sausage and all of that. All right, my next recipe that I'm gonna be trying is the Bloomin' Onion. We're gonna make it gluten-free. Um, all of my recipes are gluten-free, but it's not a big deal because all you have to do is substitute out regular flour. That's it. Everything else is the same. I'm gonna use gluten-free flour. If you're not gluten-free, use regular flour. If you know gluten-free people, send them my videos, but I'm gonna finish eating that and then we're gonna do that. Yay! Yay. So next up, I'm gonna get started on our appetizer. So I'm gonna try for the first time to make a blooming onion in the air fryer, and we're gonna make it gluten-free. But like I always say, it doesn't matter if I'm making it gluten-free, all you have to do is use regular flour. I'm using gluten-free flour, it's the only difference. But if you do know gluten-free people, make sure to send them my video. So I have two small yellow onions just because that's what I had on hand. Um, but if you want like one of the really large onions like Outback, I would suggest getting like a big white onion. Okay, so I have my two onions. Unfortunately, I didn't make the, you know, the perfect blooming onion. It started to fall apart a little bit, so just containing them in here. Still gonna taste the same though. Um, and then I have a half cup of milk and two eggs in here. I'm gonna go ahead and stir that up. I have one cup of gluten-free flour, which I'm going to um, add some paprika, salt and pepper, and garlic powder. Next, I'm just gonna preheat this for on 350 degrees. Start. I'm placing my onions in this bowl. Again, I have these little ramekins because mine fell apart. It's all good though, it's all good. So it sounds weird because you're gonna be doing like the flour and the seasonings before the egg mixture. So I'm just gonna get in there. I'm gonna try to get it in between the petals, so I might do this first and then take it out. And when we're done, we just wanna flip it upside down and get out any extra. I'm gonna put that, put it, my onion back in its seat for a second here. We'll get them next time, Tiger. Do they really have somebody at Outback just cutting up all these onions like this? All right, placing our onions back in here. We're gonna put the egg mixture in now. All right, we're supposed to let this sit for a second here. I just wanna make sure I got it all coated. Luckily, I'm not in a blooming onion competition I'm trying to make some tasty stuff in our foodie, right? Right? What's this growing out of here? Okay, you stay. Stay with your other petal friends. I'm gonna make sure you drip off any extra 
egg liquid. You might lose some petals here and there, it's okay. Back to adding more flour. I'm really coating it this time. I'm gonna make sure it gets in between all the petals. Obviously it's gonna stick much better with an egg mixture on it. Okay. Let's just call these somewhat blooming onions, okay? So in my air fryer, I'm gonna spray them. It says spray it with vegetable oil. I like to not use vegetable oil. There's a little bit of olive oil. I also like to use avocado oil. So I'm spraying them. Just remember, flowers don't compete with other flowers. They just bloom, okay guys? Sorry, I know this is like a little bit loud on the video. I'm sorry about that, but while we're waiting for this to finish, we have 14 more minutes. I'm gonna get started on our dipping sauce. So we're gonna do equal parts of mayonnaise and ketchup. Super fancy. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire. A little, little bit of cayenne, a little bit. A half teaspoon of onion powder, not to be confused with garlic powder. A half teaspoon of paprika, which I just refilled. So our kind of blooming onion is done. It smells amazing. I'm like torn because this sauce is so flavorful. I think I want to just try like this. Sorry, Chris, for my breath. It's good. I've never had a blooming onion ever because I've been gluten-free for so long. Try again with the sauce. I also just had coffee, so they pull out really easy. I know that's, I know that's uh, important. It's good, it's good. I like it, but also not like a big onion ring person or anything like that. It is really good. I'm gonna have a little bit more before I go give it to Chris. Very, very good. The only thing that I would say is like, I think this is just like the an onion ring for those who are extra. But I think if you if you like the whole like blooming onion thing with the dip and all that, this is your jam. This is a good go-to. However, if you're somebody like me who likes like really crispy, I would just rather make onion rings and do all that work. But it was very good. It is really good. Have Chris try it. The next appetizer we're making is gonna be jalapeno poppers. So for this recipe, you're just gonna need some jalapenos, some cream cheese, and some bacon. So it's not your typical like breaded jalapeno popper. This is just the jalapeno with some cream cheese and spices inside wrapped in bacon. It sounds amazing. I'm a huge baby. I don't like things that are like really spicy. I like spice, but not like, I don't enjoy myself when I'm like crying and my nose is running when I'm eating. Um, so I don't know how I'm gonna like these, but I'm excited to try it. So we're just gonna slice these lengthwise and you wanna be careful when you're dealing with this, um, like getting the insides out and the seeds out because anytime you touch that and then touch your eyes or you know, God forbid, go to the bathroom with this on your hands, it ain't pretty, so be careful. If I had gloves, I'd be wearing them, but I don't. I should probably purchase them. Okay, we have our jalapenos cut, so now I'm just gonna add eight ounces of cream cheese. I've had this sitting at room temperature because you want it to be nice and soft so you can be able to mix it. Okay, so I have my eight ounces of soft cream cheese. I'm adding in a cup of cheese. You can do whatever cheese you want, Monterey Jack, cheddar. I'm doing Mexican. Thank you. Here, Tanner. And now we're gonna do a teaspoon of cumin. Tam is gonna do it. Cumin, you got it? Good job, handsome. Okay, so now we're gonna stir it up. You can help. 
kind of hard because the cream cheese is hard. Bring it out a little bit for you. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you're doing a great that's job, right? Mom, did you put cream cheese in there? Yeah, it's cream cheese, regular cheese, like we put on our tacos, and then a spicy spice. I'll make mine. Thank you, bud. Oh, don't touch the thumbs. I don't want Good job, Ella May. Can I see a little? What? Can I see a little brushy one? Oh, I think it's going to be really spicy. Yep, that's flour. We don't need that at the moment. Do you guys want to play keep the I'm gonna cut up my bacon just in half. You can use the whole slice if you want, but okay. I'm just gonna do it like this. Because I'm gonna put in the air fryer. It's gonna be super nummy. Oh, I'm gonna just eat it all up. You're gonna try it? Yeah, I'm gonna eat it all up. I'm gonna eat all of it. Really? Yeah. Hey. I've never had this before. Hey, you. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's jalapeno, you, remember, that's a spicy pepper. Maybe, maybe you can try it and see if you like it with me. We'll try it, bite. Do you think yeah. it's going to be so spicy? No. Do you think? Yeah, I do. Oh, do you think it's going to be good? I hope so. I wouldn't eat anything off there if I were you. It's so, it's just cheese. Okay, so we have this on 375 degrees. I'm gonna check it at about six minutes. Let's go ahead and throw those in. Okay, so I did an additional five minutes because I liked the bacon crispy. They exploded a little bit. I think I overstuffed them, but maybe take a, uh, you know, Maybe you can learn something from me and not overstuff them as much, but they look good. Don't mind my kids screaming in the background. Mm -hmm. All right, don't mind Trolls Holiday in the background, but you know our kids live here too. Babe, I, Chris has to try it first. I'm too afraid of how spicy it's gonna be. I'm it's really also hot. Afraid, but... It's really hot still. Is it too hot? Nope. Is it, is it spicy? Um, it's not overly spicy. Let me see. So mine is getting my ingredients ready for our next I think that's day. the other half of the one I had. What? Right here? This one? Yeah. Hi, baby. It's good, right? Yeah. Earth? Ooh. I just get like a very light spice. Like, not super spicy at all. I mean, honestly, how can you put cream cheese and bacon on something and not be good? It was literally my first time ever having these. Hopefully it doesn't make you poop your pants. You know? What else is there? Next up, we are doing coconut shrimp. Chris and I have done this one before. It's delicious and it's so nice because we can't really get it out where it's gluten free. Most of it uses regular flour. So for this, I just have two eggs to coat our shrimp in. I have three fourth cups of shredded coconut. I just use this brand from um, Whole Foods. You can get it on Amazon. But I like adding this to like smoothies or smoothie bowls or um, chia pudding half a cup of gluten-free flour. Also, just to mention, my gluten-free flour that I always use is King Arthur. Um, it's just my favorite one so far. I'm also just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm also gonna make a really yummy sauce for this. 
Um, when I was in, pre in my prerequisites for nursing school, I worked at a diner as well as Bonefish Grill. I worked at Bonefish Grill for years and they took it off the menu, but my favorite thing there was their coconut shrimp and they had like a delicious dipping sauce. So I'm gonna show you like my tape on that sauce. But anyway, we're just mixing all this together. We're going to mix together, scramble our eggs, whisk our eggs together to dip our shrimp in. The air fryers heat it to 400 degrees. I don't know if I already said that. Do you remember me saying it? been seven minutes it smells amazing already I'm gonna flip these and we're gonna cook them for another four our last batch um, of shrimp is in the air fryer so I'm gonna start making our sauce I have a half cup of orange marmalade let me show you what it looks like I mean you can use whatever brand you want but I feel like I always see this in stores we're gonna do a tablespoon of rice vinegar. And then another teaspoon. Two tablespoons of coarse radish. If you like it extra spicy or less spicy, you'll add less or you'll add more of your horseradish. Then a pinch of crushed red pepper. Stir that up. You probably want to use a bigger bowl than I use, but I want it, it in this size. Gosh, I'm so excited. I'm going to try it without Chris, and then I'm going to go share these with Chris and take a brief intermission because then I'm going to get back to sausage and peppers, our favorite air fryer wings, um, and I'm waiting because we're going to have that for dinner tonight, and then we're going to get into three different desserts. Eat this first. I'm so excited because I haven't had this sauce in so long. The last time I didn't have the ingredients for it. You have to try it, but it's the sauce, so you have to try this sauce. It's so, so good. We are back. I have my grill insert in. Close this up and preheat it for our uh, sausage and peppers. We are skipping the Onion, we had enough onions today. And we're gonna do this on medium. Thank you so much. Also, I am at Ella's restaurant while I cook. Can I see the apple on your menu that I picked? So great. Wait, and now mommy's making the sausage, right? Where's the sausage? Yeah, I have a Good sausage. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is nice and preheated. I'm just spraying some avocado oil in here. All right, next we're just placing our sausage in. We're gonna do it kind of around the side so that we could put our veggies right in the middle here. Did this for 10 minutes and I'm gonna flip it and then we're gonna put it on another 10 minutes. Mm. 
I'm taking the peppers out because they're cooked perfectly, but we just need the sausage to cook a little bit longer. So you just have a standard pack of cut organic chicken wings. If they're not cut, then the, the uh, wing and the leg is attached and you have to cut it yourself and that's really gross. Um, and we're just gonna season it with salt, pepper, and then this Flavor God ranch seasoning and lots of it. I always just throw them into a big mixing bowl. Isn't that appetizing right there? Um, <laughs> so that I can kind of get them seasoned all the way around before I put them in, and then I actually season them again like halfway through. Currently being pickpocketed. Pickpocketing you. Here he was calling someone on your phone. This is not appetizing. Chris, where do you put it on? 390? Yeah. It is. Uh -huh. All right, now that it's preheated to 390, I'm not gonna spray it or anything, I'm just gonna throw them in. Make sure that they're spread out a little bit so that they cook evenly. And then uh, I'm gonna put it down to 10 minutes so that I remember to flip it about halfway. It's an amazing chef. Voila. All right, 10 minutes down. They're looking pretty good, just kinda have to like flip them over. See the underside is not as cooked on some of them. And then put it on for like another probably five to ten minutes. And we'll just throw a little bit more ranch on top. And literally that is it. About 15 to 20 minutes and they're perfect every time. What do you think about daddy's wings? What about that they get a one million one thousand. What do you think, Tan? <laughs> really good. Abby said really good. But yeah, you're most excited about the dessert, like Mama. Yes, I'll show you. Thumbs up. Abby, can you do a thumbs up? Good job. Let me see your little finger. <laughs> Daddy makes the best wings, right? Even more than Mom. It's okay. Oh, thanks, honey. Oh, brother. Excited because we're starting with the desserts finally. So I'm gonna do a bake 325. Okay, so I am attempting my first ever air fryer cookie cake. I don't think I've ever made a cookie cake in general, but. I'm excited, I hope it comes out good. Let's go ahead and get everything mixed up. Like I said, I have the air fryer on bake on 325 degrees preheating. All right, so I have six tablespoons of sugar. We use sugar in the raw or coconut sugar, that's why it looks like this. This is the sugar in the raw, not coconut sugar though. And then six tablespoons of brown sugar. We have a stick of butter. Stir that together. I also have a tea, uh, half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now that that's nice and creamy, we're gonna add in our egg. In here, I just have a cup and two tablespoons of gluten-free flour, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and some salt. So I'm gonna mix that together before we mix it into our wet ingredients. I switched my attachment. I'm gonna add in my flour mixture nice and slow. Adding in our cup of chocolate chips. Let's kind of stir that by salt. So I just sprayed some foil. I'm gonna pat this down. They do make certain pans that fit in the uh, Ninja Foodie, but I don't have it. A 
I mean, look like a yummy giant good cookie to me. I'm gonna take it out and let it cool. had like a family dessert outside with that cookie cake and vanilla ice cream if you make anything from today's recipes it has to be that one it was delicious I have to control myself not to eat the whole thing you like it mm. we're gonna try and make some cinnamon rolls just make it however the package is I know that there's a million recipes for air fryer cinnamon rolls with like the regular was it Pillsbury that comes in like the can but Again, we're trying to do gluten-free here. So we're gonna roll this out. So I'm putting our little um, cinnamon buns in here on 375 on bake. I sprayed it. See how much time. Our cinnamon buns are done and Carter's gonna put some icing on them for us. This is always what the gluten-free ones look like. We only did it for seven minutes in the air fryer and they were done. Oh, that's a good idea, Tan. Okay, that's yours, right? Okay. How do you do it? Here. You can just dip one. You can dip it like he did or you can take it and go. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to get on there, okay? Yeah, I want one. Yeah, can you save one for Ella to do? Thank you. Yep, Carter can save one for you to do. We are finally on our last recipe, 7.42 p.m. Switching hour and bath time, so this is a quick one. I'm just spraying in the corner here so you can't see. This is like the insert to the air fryer. Next, I'm using lemon pie filling. Okay, don't mind that. So you're gonna need a 16 ounce can. This is 22, so I'm not gonna use all of it. Put that on the bottom here. Actually, I'm gonna use all of it. Have you guys ever made a dump cake? <laughs> the name isn't beautiful, but they're always really good and super easy. Spread this on the bottom. Now we're gonna use half of a box of white cake. I'm just using Betty Crocker yellow gluten-free cake. Or yellow cake, I guess you could say. Again, only half, so you wanna be careful. Now we're gonna use eight ounces of cream cheese cut up. And now that we have our cream cheese on here, we're gonna use the rest of our cake mix. Now we're gonna top the rest with butter. All right, we're officially closing this. We're gonna hit bake on 350 degrees. Okay, this smells amazing. Not sure how it's gonna taste. 
Let's try. Don't be alarmed, I got into my jam jams. That is so good. I don't know if it's just because like, after you get the kids down, you just crave sugar, or maybe it's just me, but once I get the kids down, I like want all the sugar in the world. Maybe it's stress eating, but this is delicious. I also always love like textural differences. So there's like a crunch, there's like, you know, salty in here, there's sweet in here. It's really, really good. Awesome down here. Oops. All right, so I'm going to officially end it here. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope that you all enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more Ninja Foodie recipes in the future. Today was fun, kind of just like experimenting with different things. I usually just use it for like all the really healthy things, and then like I said, my kids' chicken nuggets and hot dogs, um, fries, like the usual stuff. But this was a lot of fun. 100% going to be making more desserts in here. They were all really delicious, but. Hope that you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. We are so close to 600,000 subscribers and I just can't wait. My birthday is July 10th. And I know that's like a huge goal to gain 4,000 subscribers between now and then, but you never know, it could happen. Again, thank you for watching. I will see you on Sunday for Sundays at Tiffany's. Real quick, I forgot to tell you that last night, one of the air fryer recipes I started last night, and that was dehydrated mango because you can also use your ninja foodie as a dehydrator and we always buy like the big bags of dried mangoes kids love them it's one of the things i put in their lunch box but it came out perfect all i did was slice up some mango i put it on dehydrate for eight hours and then i did it overnight when i woke up this morning they were perfect you just store them in an airtight jar and the kids love them So